Imagine a theater with 700 people in the audience. The red curtain, the black stage. There's a big buzz of energy as you hear people talk about how exciting it's going to be and that this will be the party of their life. Now, also imagine that this is the time and space for a rock concert for two-year-olds. <laughs> that is my audience. Is it possible to take the magic from the stage and bring into everyday life to strengthen children's self-esteem and create wonders with them? I think so. But how does it work? How do you even build the shows to get the focus of the very youngest audiences on the planet? I'm talking babies from nine months old up to four years old as the viewers in large stage productions. After writing and directing over 750 performances for the very youngest audiences that exist, I discovered special secrets to making this magic possible. Specifically for the little ones, under three years old, who react completely different in the theaters than children at any other age. Here are the things that I learned from creating these kinds of stage productions that can also be applied for anyone who has kids in their everyday life. Parents, grandparents, teachers, siblings, friends. First of all, children don't listen to the words you say. They listen to your emotions. Children listen and feel the tone of your voice. If someone cries on stage more than two, three seconds, then the children in the audience will also start to cry and want to go home. And we don't want that. The smallest children are incredibly sensitive. They feel all the emotions they see and hear. It's like saying, I'm happy. The children will hear that you're sad and not the words that say that you're happy. Because that's not true inside their emotional body. The youngest children only hear the tone of your voice and they directly reflect those feelings. Because when children are really small, babies, they don't understand all the words you say to them as a parent. Instead, they listen to your sound and they read your face. For example, they get happy when you smile. And as children get a little bit bigger, the more they understand what's being said with words in the room. They start to copy your words, your thoughts, your feelings, how you sound, how you talk, how you move, how you react to things. They become a mirror of you. Two. Kids love repetition. Repetition, repetition, repetition. It can be the same line that comes back again and again, or to have something or someone fall in one place again and again. The youngest children love it. They become safe when they recognize the pattern. Oh, mom, I know what's going to happen now. And they also feel big and smart when they understand what's going to happen in advance. And just how children look for patterns on the stage, they look for patterns in the home. So, what are you repeating? We can choose to repeat the positive sides of our children. No child grows out of repeating what they do badly. Of course, children need support and help with what's not working. But to repeatedly tell them what they can't do or what they're doing wrong doesn't strengthen their self-esteem. And it doesn't make them feel safe, big or smart. Do you grow as a human being when others continuously point out what you're bad at? And things that are constantly repeated also tend to become true, even if it didn't start out that way. So, what truths do you repeat about your children, big or small? 
he's not good at math. Or she's so shy. Or oh, he doesn't eat or like anything but pasta. And then your child goes to grandma and eat three big portions of quinoa with grilled salmon. <laughs> Children are constantly changing. See the enormous potential they carry. And the third one. Children can sit still and shouldn't sit still. As an artist on stage, you can't be offended if the audience doesn't sit still or isn't completely silent, especially when your audience is two and a half years old. So instead, I decided to create performances that are made for children who cannot sit still. In my performances, I let the children interact in large numbers by singing, dancing, shouting, clapping, waving, pointing. There are many ways we guide them to participate so the children feel alive and engaged. I want the children to be who they are in the moment, in the joy of seeing their idols live, not only on a screen, but on stage, often for the very first time. For example, in a show I've written, the main character cannot open the door unless everyone in the audience put their finger on the nose. Several things are happening at once when they do this. Just putting your finger on the nose is a motor movement that is good to practice but the children don't know that their learning is just a fun thing for them. The kids do a physical movement and it comes back four times in the show. So the children knows exactly what they should do and what will happen next. And therefore they feel big and smart and safe. It's so simple and so important. And to sit still. <laughs> what is that? Children shouldn't sit still. Children can't sit still. They're not created to sit still. Research shows that children and adults learn better and more through physical activity. Children are supposed to climb, jump and dance. How many times did you hear as a child that you should sit still? And how did that feel? Boring. If you have a body, use it, right? Four, help children understand where to focus. There are actually too many distractions for the youngest audience when they see a large stage production. Imagine you're two years old. You're sitting in the theater with your parents. You're surrounded by other children, other voices. The, the, the chair you're sitting in is weird. It's, it's a large room that you've never been in before. There's a lot going on. But you really want to see your biggest idols from books or TV live. And that's why I need to help the children understand where to focus. I make sure that the actors act big on stage, have big emotions, big expressions, and big movements to help the children's focus. For example, when an actor says his line, I sometimes need the actor to move at the same time as the line is said, so the children's eye automatically go to the person moving. And in that way, I help the youngest audience understand where to watch on a big stage. Children need our help with what to focus on as they grow up as well, because what we focus on tends to grow, even the bad. So let's help our children focus on the good things. Again, they copy our words, our thoughts, our values. Let's choose well. Five, the last one. It has to be fun. In my professional life, I've had both adults and children in my audience, but children are my absolute favorite to create for. Children are so direct. And if they don't like what they see, 
You will hear it loud and clear. It, it's boring, Mom. Mom, I want to go home. <laughs> so when I do a show for kids under four, it needs to happen with joy and laughter. Even if a show is teaching in different ways, the children shouldn't feel like they're learning. It needs to feel fun, like a game. For example, in a show I do, one character jumps up a ladder. And for each step, the character sings a note. Da -da 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 -da. And then we ask the audience to join in and help. And of course, everyone wants to join in and sing. What the children don't know then is that the glissando, the ah, is a speech exercise for young children. Young children are practicing spoken language by being able to keep that tone for as long as they can. Different accentuations like falling, ah, rising, ooh, speak quiet, speak loud. These exercises all help the children to learn how to control their voice so they can learn to speak. Also something very important I don't want to forget. Slow can be great fun when it's done the right way on stage. A great actor can basically sit on a chair for 10 minutes without saying a word, yet get great laughter from the audience by just doing different facial expressions. There are so many things for children today that go way too fast and are way too loud. No small child wants high tempo, fast cuts, and loud music. They get overstimulated and it stresses them out. But yes, children lose interest very quickly, absolutely. So I can have very few uninteresting moments on stage, but don't confuse slow with uninteresting. For audiences of all ages, it can actually be an advantage to act both slow and fun. There are many tricks you can take from the stage and bring into everyday life. One of the performance tricks that you can use when you talk in front of a group or even one person is to start whispering. For example, on stage, when it's talkative in the audience, you can count on the fact that when you lower your voice while everyone is talking, most people in the audience will become silent. And now, when everyone is silent, I can end by saying the most important thing. Let's take this magic from the stage and bring into everyday life to build self-esteem in our children. Every child, young and old, has a unique combination of talents. We are all good at different things and everyone is needed. Children are born with wings. We just have to teach them how to fly. Some children immediately come up with how to wave those wings and others bloom a little bit later. It really doesn't matter as long as the children are aware of that they can fly and that they can fly high. Look at you with magic wings you have all you'll ever need cause the world is yours to love and live so come fly Little stars never doubt your
were born with wings. Isn't fun the first key to happiness? To do things you like? To focus on things you like? Choose the fun path in life when you want to create wonders.